Hello guys, welcome back, and today I'm going to be ranking my top 5 best NHL prospect pools. Now there are some stacked prospect pools in today's NHL, but which prospect pools are in the top 5, and which team has the best prospect pool? Watch till the end to find out. When it comes to ranking these prospect pools, when it comes to individual prospects, it, I tried to create a little bit of a mix of both superstar talent and depth. So I won't be heavily reliant on teams that have superstar prospects and no depth and depth of prospects but no superstars and vice versa. But when it comes to the overall prospect rankings, I tried to heavily rely upon a mixture both of superstar talent and depth. So the teams that really have both are going to be higher in the rankings. And when it comes to individual prospects, my guidelines are they must be under age 24 and they can't play over 30 NHL games. Now we're going to go straight into it and at number 5 I have the New York Islanders. I gave them a pool grade of an A and I gave them a depth rating of a B plus and to me this New York Islanders prospect pool is very very interesting because you've got some guys that I really do like, some of those top prospects, but they also got a lot of depth to contribute as well. Now when it comes to the top 5 prospects, I have Oliver Wallstrom number 1, I have Ilya Sorokin number 2, I have Noah Dobson number three, Michael Dal Cole number four, and Kiefer Bellows number five. And that top five is very, very solid. I really do like Oliver Wallstrom, even though he hasn't had the greatest NCAA season so far. I love his potential and he could have one of the most, he could be one of the most prolific goal scorers in the league someday. I really do think that. You also got Elias Sorokin who has been a KHL beast for a long time. It's all about if he'll actually transition to North America and if that happens, watch out because he's going to be great. Going on to Noah Dobson, he's had an interesting season so far. He started out badly and then got traded and he's doing well so far so he's still a pretty solid prospect in my books. You got Michael Dalcole who has been great so far in the AHL. He's really resurged and kind of shun away the prospect bust that he's kind of been labeled as. And last but not least you got Kiefer Bellows who's kind of fallen off a little bit but his AHL career has come off to a little bit of a slow start even if he has amazing potential. And even without that top five prospects, the depth is very, very good. Right after that, you got Bodie Wild, who is fantastic defensive prospect in my mind. You got Logan Cockerell, who was on the USA World Junior Championships team. Iruzlan Ishkakov, who is a very solid prospect as well. Uh, Michael Van de Sample, who is a very solid defensive prospect in the AHL. You got Otto Koivola, who has been amazing so far in the AHL. So there's a lot of guys and a lot of depth. And while you do got superstar talents like Wallstrom, like Sorokin, like Dobson, they got a lot of solid depth guys and for the Islanders those are the kind of guys they'll need over the next couple of years. And when it comes to the positions, they're very well spread out. Sorokin could be a number one goaltender in the NHL someday if he really does develop. Oliver Wallstrom could become a prolific first line winger. You have Dobson who could become a top two defenseman in the NHL. You've got guys like Kiefer Bellows who have skyrocketed when it comes to potential. So for me, I see a lot of depth here, but also a lot of superstar talent that will help the Islanders for years to come. Now heading in on to number four, and in number four, I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. I gave them a pool grade of an A and a depth rating of a B plus. And to me, this Maple Leafs system is very, very unique in the sense that they have a lot of younger guys, but a lot of those guys have been progressing very, very well in the sense that a lot of them are in the AHL. You got a lot of guys progressing and could be on the Toronto Maple Leafs in the next few years, the way they're playing right now. And when it comes to the top five prospects, at number one, I have Timothy Lilligren. He is the best defensive prospect for the Toronto Maple Leafs, I still think. Even though he's had a little bit of a rough AHL season, he is still 19. He still has a ton of potential and will likely be the number or number two guy for Toronto going into the future after Morgan Riley. At number two, I have Rasmus Sandin. He has really progressed and started out the season in the AHL and looks like just, just comfortable. He really is young, but he's one of the youngest guys in the AHL and still producing as a defenseman. At number three, I have Jeremy Rocco, who I didn't expect to be this high a year ago, but he has been an amazing pace in the AHL with the Toronto Marlies and could get a shot in the next couple of weeks with the Toronto Maple Leafs. At number four, I have Ian Scott, who is an amazing goalie prospect who has really progressed in the last year. He's been great in the WHL and could be a future guy for the Toronto Maple Leafs, whether that's a backup or a starter. And at number five, I have Adam Brooks, who is in kind of the same position as Bracco, a little bit lesser so, but is still been producing great in the AHL. 
I mean, even without those superstar prospects that Toronto has with Lindgren and Sandine, they have a lot of depth that is also in the AHL and in some pretty major leagues that will come up in the next few years as well. And you got guys like Timmy Schopp, who've been great in the AHL, Holmberg, who has been a pretty great player in the SHL, Engvall, who, again, is another solid prospect with the Marlies, Wool, who is in the WHL, I do believe, pretty solid goalie prospect, Rasinen, who is in the Liga, Kral, who is in the Czech League, or I think he's in the WHL, uh, you got Hollowell, who's been a beast so far in the OHL, and last but not least, you got Dur Arguchev, or Arguchinkchev, I really don't know how to say his name, but he's also a pretty solid prospect. When it comes to Toronto, they obviously have those two top defensive prospects, but when it comes to the forwards, they have a ton of them, especially with the Toronto Marlies, where they've been dominant this season. While the goal innings have been a problem for the Marlies, the forward group has not been, and a lot of those guys like Engvall, Brooks, uh, when it comes to Bracco, he's been amazing. And when it comes to the depth of the Toronto Maple Leafs, they really don't need any more because they are pretty set for a long time, but they got a lot of youngsters that'll come up maybe even this month or next season that'll really help them down the line. Now, going on over to number three, and at number three, I have the Montreal Canadiens. I gave them a grade of an A, their pool, or the prospect pool as an A. I gave their depth a, a rating as well. And when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens system, I really highlight how it's been building in the last couple of years, whether it be through trades or the draft. They've been building a pretty good and pretty underrated prospect pool over the last couple of years. Now, when it comes to their top five prospects, number one, I have Nick Suzuki. He has been fantastic with the Owen Storm attack and the Guelph Storm in the OHL. Been fantastic with guys like Jason Robertson. He's been very, very impressive and will likely be a have next year, I feel. At number two, you have Ryan Poling, who is an American-born stud, one of my USA guys, was fantastic in the World Juniors, saved the USA's butts, and I'm really excited for what he can bring with the Montreal Canadiens. You also have Caden Primu, who has been great in the NCAA the last couple of years, really showing how good he is. A bit of a steal. I think he was drafted 7th in the 7th round or something a couple of years ago. He's been great. At number 4, you have Josh Brook, who's been a great defenseman in the WHL. Really solid all-around game. And at number 5, you have Jesse Yallin, who is a center. He's been great in the Liga and should be a pretty solid center, or at least depth-wise, for Montreal. When it comes to some of their depth prospect-wise, it is very, very solid as well. you got guys like Alexander Romanov, Olofsson, Fonstad, Ikonen, Fleury, Veggie Demo, McShane, Evans. There are a lot of great guys that have been drafted in pretty late rounds in the last few years and have really started to develop for the Montreal Canadiens and whether it be in different leagues. There are a ton of guys in the AHL with the um, Rocket, but there are a lot of solid prospects that are young and are coming up. And for the Montreal Canadiens, they kind of need some depth this year, at least defense-wise, and when it comes to the offense, they can always use more of that. So I feel like with the prospect pool right now, it's building very slowly but surely, but it has been very good and will continue to be good as guys like Nick Suzuki come up and destroy worlds. And with the Montreal Canadiens, it's kind of what I mean by a mixed prospect pool in the fact that they have high-end prospects like Poling, like Suzuki, but they also have a lot of great defensive guys that will help them not just make the playoffs, but go far in the playoffs someday. And that's what I like when it comes to a lot of the prospect pools. A lot of the prospect pools in this top five have that mixture of superstar talent and depth, and the Montreal Canadiens are a perfect example of that. Now, at number two on this top five, I have the Philadelphia Flyers. I gave them a prospect pool rating of an A+, and a depth rating of an A+, as well. And when it comes to the top two prospects, I'm not going to reveal who is number one quite yet, but when it comes to the Philadelphia Flyers especially, you really can't get much better than the prospect pool that they have right now. They have top-end talents, but they also have so much depth, you can't even count right now. Now, when it comes to the top five prospects, it's just stacked right now. Obviously, at number one, you have Morgan Frost, center. He's been fantastic and lights out in the OHL so far. Can't say enough good things about him. Will likely be in the NHL next season. You got Joel Baraby, who is a left winger at number two. He's been fantastic in the NCAA. Really has impressed me with how well he started off the bat. Next, you have Philippi Myers, who is a defenseman. I think he's with the Flyers NHL squad right now, but he's just starting out and is a pretty solid defensive prospect. Went undrafted and has been really progressing over the last couple of years. At number four, I have Samuel Urson. He's a goaltender who made a splash with Team Sweden in the World Juniors this year. He was fantastic and really did impress me as well. And at number five, I have Al Isaac Ratcliffe, who is a center and with the Wealth Storm of the OHL. He's been fantastic as pretty much always. Now, when it comes to the depth, there is just too much to count. It's just absolutely ridiculous how much the Flyers have depth-wise. When it comes to depth, guys like Vorobrov, Rupsa, 
Saab, Zamola, O'Brien, Matthew Strom, Cates, Labrie, Wiley, Jinning, St. Ivany. There are so many solid prospects that the Philadelphia Flyers have. Now, not any of those guys are going to come become top talents, I feel, but a lot of those guys are going to contribute depth-wise, and a lot of those guys will likely be NHL players. And on top of guys like Morgan Frost, already in the top five, it is really going to create a good, youthful movement with the Philadelphia Flyers, which is something that they kind of need right now. And while we already saw a little bit of a youthful movement in Philadelphia of Sean Couturier, Provorov, Goss Despair, that was the last movement. But with the Philadelphia Flyers, their prospect pool has been so stacked over the last couple of years that guys like Carter Hart, Oscar Lindblom are starting to really become solid NHL players. But guys already in the prospect pool, even though there have been a lot of guys graduating from it, it is still fantastic and deserves a lot of respect for how good it is. And honestly, I could keep gushing about the Philadelphia Flyers prospect pool. I honestly wish I could put it number one because of how good it is. But number one and the team that is number one, I just could not overlook. Now, in my personal opinion, the number one prospect pool in the entire NHL is the Carolina Hurricanes. I give their prospect pool an A-plus rating, and I give their depth an A-plus rating as well. While I like the Philadelphia Flyers prospect pool, the Canadiens prospect pool, the Maple Leafs prospect pool, the Islanders prospect pool, nothing tops what the Carolina Hurricanes are doing right now. And while they've had a pretty pro good prospect pool over the last couple of years, right now, it's just unbeatable. Now, for the top five prospects for Carolina, at number one, I have Martin Nikash. He is a fantastic prospect who will be probably one of the best defensive prospects in the league in a couple of years. When it comes to the forwards, you really can't get much better than Martin Nikash. And even though some people might have projected him to be ready this season, he was kind of held back a little bit, but has had a great start to his AHL career. Will likely be with the Carolina Hurricanes next season as a full-time guy. At number two, I have Jake Bean, who has taken a couple of years to start to finally develop, but he's had a great season. In AHL and should be another top four guy for Carolina. Not that they really need it though. Uh, number three, I have Adam Fox, who is kind of in the same position, has a ton of potential and has been lethal in the NCAA in the last couple of years, being one of the most highly touted defensive prospects in the league. He should be great as well. And again, not like the Carolina Hurricanes need defensive prospects, but Jake Bean and Adam Fox are both fantastic. You got a yard, you got Yanni Kukinen, who has been studly in the AHL. I didn't even know who this guy was until last year, but he's been fantastic and has transitioned amazingly from Finland. Uh, number five, I have Stelio Mathios. He has been great in the WHL and is looking to be a great power forward in the future. And when it comes to the depth also, you got big names like Degdelkovic, Viki, uh, Gucci, Alistair Reinen, Killinen, Drury, Cotton, Selgren, Sorella, Flory. And when it comes to that prospect pool, that top five is lethal as well. But the depth has a lot of guys that are very, very underrated and a lot of guys that will contribute amazingly to the NHL team. And guys like Nadelkovic could be the future of the Carolina Hurricanes when it comes to goaltending. Guys like Geeky are going to be fantastic players, I feel, in the future as they start to finally develop. But again, a lot of those guys are on their AHL team. A lot of those guys are in high professional leagues. And that's what makes it so interesting and so impressive. For the Carolina Hurricanes, while a lot of other teams have a lot of solid prospects in the CHL and the NCAA, the Carolina Hurricanes have a ton of prospects providing a lot of offense and a lot of defense for some fantastic leagues. And when I said earlier that I was prioritizing mixture in prospect pools, the Carolina Hurricanes are that perfect, perfect scenario and the perfect example. When it comes to their prospect pool, uh, there's a ton of guys that prioritize offense, a ton of guys that prioritize defense, a ton of elite forward prospects, a ton of elite defensive prospects, and Adelkovic could become the goalie of the future for Carolina. So they got so many young guys that have already come up and play well on the NHL team, really fueling the Carolina Hurricanes and being in a playoff position, but there are so many guys that are still Still waiting to crack the NHL roster that next year could be the youngest team in the entire league. And even though the Carolina Hurricanes are still a very young team right now, when guys like Martin Nikash come in, guys like Jake Bean come in, it's going to get even younger, even faster, and a lot of these guys are perfect for today's NHL. Prioritizing offense, prioritizing speed, a lot of these guys have those kinds of qualities, and for the Carolina Hurricanes, they are building a prospect pool and a youthful core that will succeed for a long, long time. But of course, with this video, I want to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments down below. So let me know what you think about my top five prospect pools. Do you agree with my rankings or do you disagree with my rankings? And of course, let me know your top five down below. Which team has the best prospect pool?
But if you guys want some more grab videos just like this one, you can click on this card right here to watch my video about my March edition 2019 NHL mock draft. But that is going it for you guys. If you guys didn't enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on my top five prospect pools and what your rankings would be as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.